Thank you, Linda, for that very kind uh, opener. So how's everyone doing today? You good? Uh, before I begin, I'd like to know how many of you are from education? Raise your hands. Okay. All right, good. Interesting. Okay, so um, if you haven't figured this out, um, in education, we don't necessarily have the most cutting edge uh, IT initiative. Uh, but uh, it's going to be interesting speaking to the education side of the house. And then who else do I have? What other? Business, private, banks? Okay, properties. Okay, interesting. So I'm here representing College of the Desert. Uh, we're located in Palm Desert, and we're a California community college system. And we have 112 community colleges in our system. In the case of College of the Desert, we serve over 13,000 students. We're a HSI Hispanic serving institution, and uh, we can process in a given year as much as 20, 30,000 pieces of document, depending on how big or small the files are. So today's agenda is the process of choosing AMI and LaserFiche as a project, how we leverage the forms and the workflow, and the critical factors that kind of pushed us in this direction. So I don't know about other educational institution, but California Community Colleges a few years ago was under scrutiny for uh, lack of efficiency, lack of technology, and lack of completions. So it really was a push to be innovative to serve students and foster completion. And then, so we're gonna discuss that as well, and then we were gonna talk about how to scale it across the organization. Okay, so this is what makes College of the Desert a little different. In the California Community Colleges, I don't know about your educational systems, there was primarily two vendors that owned the imaging market for documents. But when you spoke to the a and directors and the financial aid directors and the executives, they were clunky at best and there was a lot of manual work. And so College of the, De uh, of the Desert decided to do something a little different. It, we decided to send an RFP, which is a request for proposal and a few vendors were selected to present. And what was interesting about it, the vendors that kind of owned the California Community College System were so confident that they were gonna get this account that we got a, about a two-page proposal when all the competi competing vendors sent 20, 30 pages demos and came in and did extensive demos even using our own materials. So we never heard of Laserfish. Uh, we never even knew that it was as big as it was. All we knew is that we had direction from the executives to dream big. And dreaming big is an interesting concept in education. So it's, it's about scanning, it's about archiving, it's about filing. But we wanted to attach it to student records so that the document didn't live in three, five, six different departments. But we are a data-driven institution. We want the information in those documents to better serve students. And I'll talk about more of that information. So in this case, when we had the interviews, we did, we did dream big. We said, what if, see, for maybe some of the companies, it was, a new, it was not a new concept, but for us, the idea of scanning without a person printing it out and handing it to the next person and the next person sliding it into a file and a machine and then typing in a student ID number was, that was our world, so we didn't know any difference. So the more we asked questions, the more it seemed that Laserfish was the answer. And then we have regulations. We have, you know, when we should destroy documents, uh, retention. Uh, so our retention policy was, is there a few more boxes in the back? Okay, let's see what dates on them and let's throw them out or shred them. So we, we selected and recommended AMI using Laserfish. Okay. So here were the areas of improvement. A document could go through five to 10 staff hands. It would start at an instructional department through the department secretary. It might go through a dean or a chair. And if we're lucky, within the same week, it was walked over to admissions and records, or maybe it was a financial aid document. And then the person at the counter said, maybe it's complete and maybe it isn't. And that person at the counter went to another staff person and said, I think it's complete, so I'm gonna leave it here and then they would leave it here, and then the person, that staff person would say, you know, I have a stack on my desk, and just maybe I can get to it this week. And then that person said, well, it really shouldn't go to me. It should go to a director or a dean. So we had 
and we lost a lot of documents. At one term out of 1,000 documents for faculty, we ended up losing 300. So we needed to eliminate the process. We needed to get the document to who it was supposed to get to. And there's another initiative. We were growing in terms of off-campus sites. Um, on the east side and on the west side, and we were growing our distance education program. And unfortunately, how did those people turn in their forms for admissions and records and financial aid? They had to wait between 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on a Monday through Thursday, or a Friday from 9 to 12 p.m. to physically pick up the form, physically hand the form in, and in some cases, uh, depending if it was an odd holiday, they wouldn't make it at all. And our valley was huge. Our valley is huge. So sometimes our students have to travel as much as two hours in the bus or as much as 60 miles to even get to the Palm Desert campus. Eliminate paper. Um, we were notorious for carbon copies. We still have a couple left that we're trying to get out of there, but everything was a carbon copy because the carbon copy would go to five different locations and even then we didn't know if we would lose it. And then we weren't destroying documents in the timeline as prescribed by the state of California. And the most important part was the information for us to help students, it needs to, the records need to be attached to the student in the student information system. In our case, it's Datatel. Okay. But this is where we think bigger. I'd like to think College of the Desert and the California Community College System is an innovative campus. We're thinking, we're moving ahead, and we're moving ahead because we care about our students and we care about student success. So in thinking of the future, we're using the information in the documents to better serve our students and foster students' success. So what if we find out a certain group of students is having repeatability issues in math because they keep submitting those petitions? Then we, as an executive team, as an institution of a higher education, can get together and say, how can we help those students pass their math class? But more importantly, with the Student Success Initiative, it's the idea of multiple measures. So right now, we have a, uh, our uh, placement tool is AccuPlacer. Some is Compass, some is Testing Center, and so forth. Ours was AccuPlacer, but research has shown that the information you need to help students place accurately lives within their high school transcripts. And we just finished an initiative where all our high school districts could transmit their high school transcripts electronically. So what we want was the information to better place and serve students. Okay. So creating forms and workflows. In our, we had over 18 forms. Um, again, they had to be turned in during the operating hours. Um, and then all forms were redesigned. Um, they were redesigned to submit electronically. Um, they were easy to uh, scan, so the OCR function. So now, instead of typing it all in, if we do receive a form at the counter, we just slide it into a scanner, it pre-populates the field, make sure it's accurate, and now it is, it's attached to the student record. And then um, we entered into the workflows. So now a petition didn't go through five or seven or eight people's hands. It went. Uh, straight to the director. And from then, the director would approve or not approve and it'd go into a workflow. And I'm gonna show you a couple examples of that as well. Any questions so far? Okay. So implementation was easy. Um, I don't know about other educational institutions, but our IT capacity is limited. And the first thing IT wants to know at, at our institution is it IT heavy? How much, how much work or time do you need from us? And by the way, we, we don't have time or capability because we have to prioritize these other projects. So it was little or no time from our IT uh, department. Forms were created by AMI and LaserFiche. So all we did was hand over a stack of forms and they came back in this beautiful format that was pre-fillable. And it also forced the staff and the departments to re-look uh, at our forms because we didn't realize how many forms we had until we went through this process. So in one form, which is an information change form, we had a name change form, a social security change form, an address change form, we, and we didn't even realize it. So we put it all together and we streamlined some of the processes. And then uh, AMI scanned our paper files and integrated it into LaserFiche. But this is what's funny. No implementation is without its kinks. We realized that our forms are meaningless if they didn't have the additional documents. 
And we said, okay, they turned in the form, but they still have to come in person because we need a copy of their driver's license, we need a copy of their IRS transcript, and we need a copy of this. So within Laserfiche, they created, and AMI created an upload documenter. So with the upload documenter, students can upload their documents and it goes to their student record. So they can do that remotely as well. The other interesting problem we had, um, we had three information systems. We had Coco, which was homegrown. Um, we had Datatel or Lucian. And then we had Microfiche. <laughs> so we thought we're going to still have to look in Microfiche. Um, we're still going to have to look in Coco. And then we had a, a kind of clunky archiving system called ATI Filer. And so in, my, in the staff's hands, it, it didn't help anyone because we had four places we're going to have to look. And then the solutions were all copied and filed into Laserfiche. So what we thought was an impossible task, especially in admissions and records, I don't, they actually put the microfiche back in a closet somewhere last week because they haven't used it since the implementation because they were able to find the, because you know, staff want, they want to hold on to their paper so they were afraid that we're going to, somebody from the 1960s is going to want that transcript and we're not going to be able to find it. And every time they went back, it was there. So that was pretty cool as well. Okay, so here's the student process. Now, okay. we have, we're lucky enough to have a student portal and our student por portal acts as an authentication. <coughs> for our students, and so it can, it can be a substitute for some documents as a signature. Let's see. Let's see. No, it's not loading, and we tested it earlier. Okay, let's try this and see if it will help. Okay, here it is. I think I went, okay, let me start. I think I went ahead, but um, before we get to this, I want to show you the student process. There it is. So keep in mind, carbon copies, student counter. Right now, students see, log into their, let's see if this works, yes. Logs into their student uh, portal. And right when they log in, let's see. Let me try again. Right when they log into their homepage, what you see is their financial aid forms and their A&R forms. And these, uh, so as you can see, we reduced our forms to over 20 to just a few documents. And now, what used to be about three or four departments to change a major, is now a simple form that students can use and submit, and it goes right into workflow. So this document, in this case, we have respective alphabets for the a &R specialist who evaluate. So this document will now go to the alphabet of the a &R specialist who owns that alphabet, like A through D. And after he, uh, he or she reviews it, it'll go to the lead specialist. And then after that, two people, a degree and or certificate is awarded. Real easy, 24-7. So we went to student activities. What do you think they said? Well, they're, okay, so some of our students are a little zealous because they're so attached to it. The, they loved it, and they go, do we even need people anymore? They're like, no, that, there's stuff that goes in the back end. So they're, but they loved it. So, and sometimes in education, you don't always hear, like, the good stuff. But when you don't hear the negative stuff anymore, that's a really good sign. So in fact, it worked too well. 
because what I did here is the negative stuff from the staff because student A submitted theirs at 3 a.m., student B submitted theirs at 5 a.m., and next thing you know, form submissions like tripled. So we had to work through that. But students loved it. And then sometimes it helped our lines and so forth, because if they had a device, instead of waiting in line and waiting for a person to try to get to them and so forth, you would see them get into their lines, submit the document, and if it would, sometimes if we have availability, like from a director and so forth to review, it would go right into queue, and by the time they go went and met with the director, it was already in the file and attached to their record. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I noticed you have, um, I noticed you have uh, um, a field for, sig or for initial and student name. Oh. Can you comment on the process you went through to validate that that was acceptable to have students just type in their name as a, as a valid okay. electronic signature? So we have a really... Um, <laughs> You know what, I'm not an IT person, so when I say it's really sophisticated, for me that's really sophisticated. We have a, um, a LDAP uh, authentication system that connects to our active directory as well as our student directory to verify that that's the student who entered the portal. Now the initials you see is right now um, we can't text, we can't get to social media other than a, a blast. We make them initials so that they understand that the college's official form of communication is email. So when the student says, I didn't get my notification, we now can hold the student accountable and it meets our rules in terms of uh, informing the students of our official means of communication. So the initial is for the official means of communication. So now we also went paperless. We were notorious for US mail. In some areas, we still are notorious for US mail. By that initial, it gives a &R the right to email um, through their COD email. Does that okay. um, are, students, are students able to access their records through it? Like, let's say they want to know all the number of classes they've taken, how many units, what still, you know, what what other courses they need to take to finish a certain degree. Do are do they have accessibility to this? Okay, so we have. Um, so in terms of our information system, it's a little more advanced, and so is our portal than some of our colleagues in the California Community College System. So yes, the answer is, can they access that? And what we're doing now is, um, the, for example, the electronic SEPs for their education plan. It lives within our information system. However, other departments need to access it. So through our portal, they can access it, and we're about to give, for example, financial aid the ability to access it. But that's a combination of our student information system and our document system, which is LaserFish. Mm -hmm. But yes. And remember I told you moving ahead? So this time around for scheduling, when, there's my boss, that's why I'm pointing to her. <laughs> She's the executive vice president of the college. So when, when uh, the executives and my boss says, we want to respond to students. What do they need off of those educational plans? What are the documents telling? For the first time, we can tell them how many students need what and what term. We tested it. Um, we're using information from their high school transcripts since they're electronic. We can start informing, uh, informing scheduling so it's responsive to students as opposed to rolling it over. And again, that's a, a combination of things as well. So they just they can still come into the office. Um, we have we have about four to five offsite locations. Uh, in the opening of one of our new sites in Indio, uh, that came up by the director. So as we see, but we're not sophisticated at it. We can we have our mobile carts where we can bring our uh, the laptops and the connection to the community. So I know we have done that in libraries, um, we have done that in community centers, and I know we have done that in boys and girls clubs. Mm -hmm. And then, and see, and there's twofold. I, I don't know about your state, but a state of California really holds the student accountable and responsible for knowing their information, and, and, and it's a new thing for California Community College to say that we're part of that responsibility. 
So thinking of creative ways in terms of accessibility, but like our, we have Wi-Fi at all our locations, we have extended hours into the evenings, and we have our mobile carts. And as we get better at this, our expectation is to immer immerse ourselves in the community. Okay. So um, in all, uh, okay, so our next step. Students were happy. We're dealing with the influx of documents that are coming through 24-7. Now, what do you think our faculty said? They said they wanted to. And, and I, we, I love our faculty, but if the students can have it, so can we, and it should be done overnight. <laughs> so we heard that, uh, that comment, plus, um, let's see. Oh, that's our next one. So what ended up happening is our faculty forms that go into a &R, we ended up doing the same workflow, and they have their own portal. And that's, let me go back once. And admission and records is one of the few student services departments. Okay. Is one of the few student services departments that interact with instructional faculty as much as more than any other student service department, I would argue. So the incomplete grade form, the grade change form, let's see, I think I'm having technical difficulties. But um, all those forms were put in their portal and we were able to combine all faculty forms into three forms. So sometimes we have faculty who went on vacation and they thought they submitted all their documents. The problem is they would have to turn it in in person, they would have to do, they weren't physically there anymore. Um, they were already on their trip, but now they can submit it 24-7 from any location that they have web access. And in fact, I think the first time we did it, we had faculty who turned in forms from like three cruises when they ported. Because that was more important. <laughs> but um, I wish I could show you that too. But, but it's the same idea. It's just three forms and it's an easy workflow. And same idea, you don't always get a compliment for the changes you've made. However, what ends up happening is you don't hear, yeah, you don't hear the complaint. And then we didn't lose for the first time grades. You know how many things are writing on grades. Um, sometimes because we didn't get that grade change form, we had a student who I had to personally call their admissions office because of our delays so that they wouldn't lose their transfer space. I mean, that's how critical some of these things were. So, and we were able to address, I, I don't think I've had one call like that ever since. So the staff experience, okay. So here, the, so this was, um, when we did the implementation, it was an RFP uh, to uh, several departments. In my areas, the departments were a and financial aid, and enrollment services. Now, the implementation that I oversaw personally was the admissions and records. And just like any file, you see how it's filed there <coughs> under the departments. Now, our workflow, the way it follows is there's the director of A&R, there's a lead evaluator, and there's the specialist. So documents now go directly to the alphabet, the assigned alphabet of the specialist. The lead evaluator checks quality assurance, and the director is involved in the workflow if there's an exception or the op opposite if it starts with an exception. So here, Two common documents is residency and petition. And uh, there's, we, this is where we found our first issue. Residency requires a minimum of three required documents and then some. So with a document uploader, we now get the document and all additional documents with a student record. And this is, I hid the other side because that's the personal information of the student and I don't wanna break FERPA. <laughs> and so, See, uh, so on the bottom, we actually have a drop-down menu for workflows, and then we have a comment box if we need, but it pretty much follows the workflow, and then the, when they specialist decision, send application to director, else it could say send application to evaluator, or it's completed, and then the uh, information is noted and changed in the information system. Okay. So communicating every step of the way. For the admissions and records, Workflow, a document through, 
moves through a workflow and students are notified via college email, which is why the initial was so important because when we wanted to cut down on student calling us, to, has it been approved, has it been looked at, has it been looked at, and they will, some of them will do it daily. And they've memorized who their alpha is, so they're calling them directly now. Now with this information, they know where it lives through. And what used to take us two to four and sometimes six weeks, we've been going through a workflow, I think, within a day. And sometimes it's part of our, our, our kind of uh, our director's workflow and our, all our a and specialists and our lead specialists, they pretty much get through it in a day. Plus, they used to chase down documents from other departments. So they're not chasing down documents because it lives within the file. Uh, documents go to who they are supposed to go to. Documents can move. Okay, so we had different, my departments worked a little differently. So there were three options. We can go to a position, round robin, or an alphabet. We ended up using all three workflows. And it was pretty seamless. And I thought maybe it would cause confusion among the staff. But in terms of a, a practitioner point of view for the staff, it made sense. And we used all three. Okay, so the Student Success Initiative in California, how many of you have heard of it? No? Okay, so it's, it's actually a Senate bill called 1456, which holds us to a standard. Um, there's about eight areas that we have to focus on with 22 recommendations. So we're focusing on completion and student success. And we're one of the few states uh, that have a public scorecard for the public to view and almost kind of judge us on, if you will. And we're going to be held to that public scorecard on an annual basis with some expectations as it comes to the Senate bill. So that changes the way we do business. We were an institution of access when we were created. That means everybody in California could get a higher education. As long as we open the doors and you were able to get through them, that was our responsibility. Now our responsibility is to get you through the door, to make sure you stay, to make sure you stay successfully, and to make sure you achieve a goal, and the three goals are transfer, certificate, and degree. Um, and in some cases, things were mandated. So the matriculation services, um, SEPs are mandated for us, short-term and long-term. So, uh, Things that, uh, other things, uh, using technology to improve student success. We are now getting funding that has to be t directed towards student success and we have to prove that whatever we put them, wherever we threw the money at, actually help them through that. So targeting services is one of them. Our goal is to, and we've done it in some cases already, is to take all the information on the documents. There's two documents that are really important to us. One are those high school transcripts. Four years of course taking behavior and testing behavior does not just go away in higher ed. So if we can create an algorithm that places them correctly, then we can foster student success. It's similar to what they call the Long Beach model. So last grade in your last math class. Uh, what is your testing score? Last uh, math class you took. Last grade in your English or average grade in four years of English. Imagine lifting all that information feeding it to an algorithm and placing students. The research has shown that's a more accurate placement than, than placement tests, period. So the interesting part of that, do you, can you imagine getting all these staff to evaluate thousands of transcripts? Our income in class can be two to 3,000 in one term. We, there's no way, we can't even do front end transcript evaluation the way universities can for incoming students. So there was no way we can do high school. So we needed an electronic solution. So our high school districts join in an MOU to do, deliver transcripts to us electronically and working with AMI and Laserfiche, it's now sitting on our server and now is the harder part. We have to work with our faculty to realize an algorithm that we can automate. And then imagine placement alone can change your success rate. So that's one. The other one is targeting services. Now that we have uh, an ability to track and see what documents are coming in and out, if we find an at-risk or high-needs population after looking at the documents, and we can do it two ways. We can do document type, but we can also do content analysis, which is a more qualitative based on the questions executives ask. And using that, we can make recommendations for how to target services for our most at-risk students. And that's part of the mandate also in student success. Then 
Um, this is what we're planning for next year is the milestones, celebrating the 15 units, the 30 units, and the 45 units. Documents and information that lives in those documents are really critical for identifying the students. So not only do we have the documents that students move through, we have um, an incredible ability to data mine our information system, to combine the information, to give, uh, to give uh, direction on how to serve our students. And uh, I've already talked about the high school transcript and placement. So, and just to let you know where we're at, uh, right now, uh, 90% of our students place in one or more basic skills courses. So we're dealing with less than 10% of a college ready population. So, and some of our success rate and some of our basic skills are as low as 20%. So we have a lot to improve on. Now, why are we so efficient? We have reduced lines. Oh, so we had a registration period two weeks ago. Ask me how long the lines were. Take a guess. We didn't have any lines. So there's a combination. We did a lot of things right, but some of the lines is the hold because of documents, repeatable, and so forth. Those were all done online, and very few people turned them in. So we had no lines, and so we, we thought we were all going to lose our jobs. <laughs> and there's no students. And so we thought there were no students. And we found out, we went, uh, we have uh, surpassed our head count by 3%, and today we found out by 6%. So the students are there, they're using the tools. Um, so that was, I mean, we all, you, can you imagine the counselors? They're running out. <laughs> Let me counsel you. You need an ed plan. <laughs> we didn't know what to do. So 24 access to forms and submissions, uh, increased student satisfaction. Our turnaround has improved for documents from weeks uh, and months in some cases uh, to days. Reduced manual processing of a document. We can now serve our off-campus centers in distance ed. And this is a really important part because we're going to be up for accreditation, and that's always an accreditation standard. The services, are they similar or comparable to what you offer on what's considered the main campus? So now we can say that we are uh, making uh, progress towards that. Meeting our state regulations for moving and destroying documents without any staff intervention. So during that interview, if you told me that it could automatically destroy documents within the timeline we need, I, th I thought that was a crazy uh, question. And I, everyone in the panel was like, what do you mean it can do it automatically? We usually have, that's why we have the storage room. We just built a new building with like three storage rooms for those documents. So one day when we go in there, we can destroy them. <laughs> but now we have kind of uh, some destroying mechanisms and, uh, and we're beginning to use the data. Okay. And just recently, we were recognized, as, uh, as Linda said, as a model of efficiency as one of the five program honorees um, for this past December edition. And we get so excited at, um, about the things we do at College of the Desert because we're doing a lot of great things that we forgot that we were waiting for this. So our colleagues started calling us and congratulating us because we were off to the next, you know, kind of initiative in terms of forward thinking. So as soon as this comes up, I'll show you the article. Have you guys have been having internet issues? Oh. At a technology conference? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yours is good? Oh, yours too? Okay. I had to throw one pun in there. In education, you know, we're, I mean, I'm sure you guys are going, you guys have a lot of fun and laugh a lot, so I wasn't sure when I was at, when I was at Rumble and, what is, I was like, what, where am I? And, and then, but it was very informative, she was right. And then I was like, I don't think I'm gonna learn anything here. But it was really interesting, because um, the, the business side of things is very different from education, so uh, now, we thought we were dreaming big, and now I think we feel after this conference, we feel we can dream even bigger. And in the midst of all that, we're serving students, which is, which is what we love and what we do best. Okay, I guess not. I can't get, okay. Yeah, so the internet is not working for me. Okay, so the upcoming year, we're, like I said, um, uh, we're a very innovative um, college who cares very much so about student success, so we're, we're, we're gonna keep moving forward. 
So upcoming year, we have three more departments that we'll be implementing. It'll be counseling, uh, uh, the Office of Students with Disabilities. Um, it will be, I think the other one is EOPS Care. And we just had some initial discussions that we never even thought about until we saw some of the sessions, which is um, international program. Can you imagine our international students are still using US Postal Service? Um, educating the college, how did we scale? Uh, sometimes you don't even know how good you're doing within your own backyard. So we ended up having a full meeting and admissions and records demonstrated what we were doing to the other departments. And they were like, that's what I want, that's what I want, that's what, sometimes it starts there because even when you explain it, I've explained this, our process to admission and records colleagues all over the state and they still don't believe me. I th I'm gonna hopefully present at the next conference because they're gonna wanna see it. They don't think that's even possible. Um, so we have to educate college and administration, administration and our colleagues. Uh, modeling the efficiency for other departments. So we are a data-driven institution. I'm a statistician by trade. So we always show the efficiencies and as well as the student statements and the staff statements. And then we try to bring it together in a, a one or two page document so people can see the benefits of it. And then student satisfaction with improved and paperless process. In education, students come first. So if the students say, we're happy, we love it, or they, the opposite is true, they stop complaining and they start using the tools, that is how we scale up. Okay, so any questions? Was it even informative if you weren't in? <laughs> You're like, no. So, um, any questions? This is okay. this is gonna sound kind of basic, but you talked about one form that's, or a few forms that are left that people do fill out on paper and you scan in. So one of the questions we're kind of running into is what happens to that piece of paper after you've scanned it in? Because the, the scanner doesn't swallow it. So then you end up with these stacks of scanned papers that we don't know where to put. <laughs> so it, after the term's over, um, we destroy it. They get shredded. We have a big shredder. Um, but, but we used to, if, if let's say this is uh, enrollment services. Imagine filing cabinets through the room like this. I think they're 10 feet tall. And the other day, you know, because past practice, I went to go look, I don't know why. <laughs> Just, where's the file? I was like, oh no, I should go to laser view. They were all empty and I'm like, why do we have all these file cabinets in the middle of the floor? Um, but we, we actually get rid of them at the end of the term during a slow period. Mm -hmm. When you scan the, I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's how. <laughs> when you scan the documents or when they're uploaded um, electronically, how, how can you differentiate if they're official or not official? Oh, our portal, LDAP authentication. They have to authenticate before they even get to those forms. That's why I was showing you the student side. So you saw how I logged into my portal. There's uh -huh. an authentication system. And then you only have access to the forms that are for students. But if they, um, if they give you like a final high school transcript mm -hmm. and it, it has a graduation date on it, but if it doesn't have like the teacher or counselor signature on it, it's not official. So in our case, actually, okay, so signatures are handled on the official transcript at the high schools because we have an electronic MOU, uh -huh. it's sent to us as a complete file and it's considered official and locked until we unlock it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if it does come electronically, it's y'all just count it as official. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And college transcripts, like if they have transfer work coming over? If that college, yes. So we have, um, we're a little clunky on that, but we can connect to the Texas server. Okay, mm -hmm. so like at a, an out-of-state, if they're like eScript or mm -hmm. Parchment or yes, anything Yes, so like we that? have, we can connect to Parchment, we can connect to um, uh, Texas server, and we can connect to um, the e-transcript system. Okay, yes. so all of that you just mm -hmm. count as Mm -hmm. uh, oh, thanks. Hey, in terms of return on investment, um, cost savings in your operations or what? I think at one point, we are growing incredibly fast in, in terms of state apportionment and student headcount. For the capacity of students we're handling now, our a &R department was double. I think it was more than double. And even with the doubling of the staff, I think the lines were still around the building multiple times. So um, 
that's kind of the best answer I have now. And, and probably in this time of growth, as part of our program review process, we would have been like, we need, you know, we need more A&R staff. We can't handle the incoming students. Uh, we just grew by about 6%. And we still have, we don't have lines down on the second floor of the building. Hi, Annabelle. <laughs> I get to work with her every day, so. Um, so to, I wanted to actually just comment on the question before that, which was, um, what do you do with the documents that you're scanning? So we were just talking today, and um, something that I'm really excited about is the uh, is moving towards using smartphones to take photographs of documents and then upload the photograph. Um, because there's some applications now that I'm becoming aware of where students can actually take their smartphone, take a picture of that, upload it, and then it transitions it to us. There is no paper, and it doesn't stay on their phone, right? For security reasons, it, it doesn't live on that device. So I think that's gonna help us because our students don't have scanners. They, they really don't. Some of them don't even have computers, mm -hmm. but they have smartphones. Uh, <laughs> and so I think um, our goal will be to, to try to move towards as much device technology as possible to help students with that. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Well, I just wanna um, thank you for coming to an afternoon session instead of being at Disneyland. <laughs> I wanna thank our partners, AMI, and, and I'm telling you, Laser Fish, it, at least in my world, in terms of education, I've never heard of it. And when we think about it, we just get really excited. And then I also wanna take, um, Thank our executives in education. Sometimes change is very difficult, but our executives at College of the Desert are very forward thinking and innovative. So I'd like to think we are too. So thank you.